Photoshop gives us powerful image adjustment tools that are available under image and adjustments and you'll see there's quite a selection here. They are in groups. First section is based upon exposure of different types. The second affects color. The third affects how the color is handled within the image. The next two affect shadow and highlight. HDR toning is a part of that. And then the last section is a direct effect on color. We have desaturate, we're color shifting, and we're equalizing color. So let's look at each group here individually. First we'll look at brightness and contrast. And the controls are simple and they do exactly what you would expect them to. If I move the slider for brightness to the right, it brightens the image. If I move it to the left, it darkens it. So it's pretty straightforward. And the brightening and darkening is global. So every pixel is treated equally. The same is true with contrast. The contrast increases the contrast or decreases the contrast in the image globally. So it doesn't treat certain sections of the image different than others. And you'll see later on as we get into these tools where that can be a significant part of your editing process because some of the tools allow you to target just highlights or just shadows. And so please know that with the brightness and contrast, everything is happening from a global perspective. Okay. They also give you the option of using auto where the software reads the image and then makes suggestions on how to uh, correctly balance the image through brightness and contrast. And then if I click auto, you notice that it's processing and it changed the brightness slightly and it increased the contrast to 42. And so based on the algorithms in the program, this is what the program would consider a properly balanced image. Of course, in many cases, it's subjective and we can tweak it to our heart's content to determine what we feel is most appropriate for what we have in mind for our photograph or our graphic. The next option that we have is levels and levels takes brightness and contrast kind of to the next level because we have a number of options available to us. You'll notice that in the top histogram area, we have shadow, midtone and highlights. Then below we have output levels, which is very similar to brightness controls that we just saw. You also notice that there's a number of uh, presets that allow us to achieve specific results like increasing contrast, lightening shadows, and so on. And then we have channels where we can affect all three channels, red, green, and blue, simultaneously by adjusting the sliders, or we can just adjust one of the three, whichever one we choose. The last section that I want to point out here are the eyedroppers. And the eyedroppers give us a very pixel specific control. If I double click on this shadow eyedropper, you'll notice that right now all the values are set uh, to black. And how that works is with the shadow eyedropper selected, if I click on a certain area of the image, let me move this off to the side, Wherever I click, it resets that pixel value to whatever the value is for the eyedropper. So in this case, 100%. So if I click in the shadow area, it's going to reset the image based upon where I clicked. Okay. Now, if I click in a light area with the shadow, it's going to extremely darken it because it will take that lighter pixel and reset it to black. That's how the eyedroppers work. The same is true with the midtone and the highlight. And we have full control over what these uh, values are. In other words, let's say I want to make my highlight area this part of the sky right here. Notice where it reset it to the light blue. Or, you know what, let's go with something a little more pronounced. If I click OK and then with that eyedropper selected, click anywhere in the image, it resets that value to that blue. Okay, that specific pixel, wherever I'm clicking, it resets it to that value. So it really gives us a lot of control over how our shadows and highlights show up. So I'm going to hit cancel and then we're going to open that again. Adjustments, levels. 
And let's take a look at this section of the levels. First we have shadow. And the further we move the slider to the right, the darker the shadows go. The further uh, with the highlight, the further to the left, the brighter the image gets. And then of course, with the midtones, it affects the middle range of pixels. Now, a couple things to keep in mind when you're working on an image, especially a photograph. Right now, the histogram that you see here is pretty much ideal for this photo because the object of the game is to not have any of the dark area or the light area slammed up against the edges. Now, if you move the sliders to the left or to the right, you'll notice that if you draw a vertical line straight up, all of the pixel ranges from 14 pixels and to the left, those values are now solid black. And the further you move to the right, it's saying that all of the pixel values from 0 to 29 are now solid black. And that's why your image is naturally darkening. Same is true with the right. Right now, the absolute value of 255 is 0% any color. So it's pure white. So the further I move this slider to the left, what it's saying now is all the pixels in the image from number 229 clear up to 255 are now reset to white. That's really what's happening. It's not just a matter of sliding the slider one way or the other to brighten or darken the image. There's actually specific math that goes on behind it. Now, with the output levels, it handles things in a different way. It actually handles them more globally. It ignores highlight, midtone, and shadow. And it functions very similar to contrast and brightness combined. Like if you combine those two together, output levels works very similarly. And you'll notice that you still have the values of 255 and 0, but it functions opposite what happens up here. So in other words, as I move the slider down and we get to the lower numbers, notice how everything is darkening. And it's doing so in a very even uh, level way. Same is true if I move the slider up from the left. It's lightening everything globally. And you can see how it's very obvious here. So you can actually use the two settings in conjunction with each other to lighten or darken your image, either globally or a little bit more specific to the, the midtones. Let's say that the blue was a little bit out of whack here and we wanted to focus on just that. We can select a new channel instead of RGB. We could come up and select just the blue channel. And now you'll notice that, first of all, the histogram has changed. But if I move the slider for the midtone, all that's affecting is just the blue. Now you notice that the image is getting more green or less green. That's because it's adding blue, because I'm moving it to the left, or subtracting blue so that the yellow and the, or the red and the green together shine out more predominantly. So it's affecting the colors that way, but only the blue channel. Okay, so you could literally go in and tweak say just that part of the blue channel then we could come up to the green channel and maybe increase the green this way or maybe cut it back a little make it a little darker and then choose say the red channel here and you notice the further I move to the left the more red it gets more to the right how it gets more blue and green so you can actually adjust the image that way as well. It's a little more specific channel to channel. And if you compare it to the original, you can see where we actually warmed up the the rock a little bit, but the sky is pretty much identical to what it was. So that's the benefit of working with levels in that way, is that you can actually increase contrast some or decrease it using the output levels. And then, of course, even though we've made adjustments in each of these channels, we can also make adjustments globally on the RGB. So I can darken the whole midtone area of the image if I want to. Okay. Next, we have curves. And curves works very similar to levels, except in a lot more precise detail. Whereas Curves, we were presented primarily with shadow, midtone, and highlight. Curves, we can get very specific. We can go focus in on a specific 
tone, you'll notice how it, it's sharing down here where it says input and output. It's actually telling you the pixel number that I'm on as I go down this scale. And again, you can affect either RGB or just the red, just the green, just the blue. It also comes with presets as well. And just to kind of show you how it works, we're not going to spend a lot of time in this, but if I say click on this point right here, which is at 190, I can drag this down and it's just affecting this image based upon where I'm dragging it down. If I drag it to the left, it's brightening it, but notice how the curve is adjusting. So it's just a different way that I can go in and get specific. So maybe I want this value down here in the darker register to increase in brightness a little bit, but I want to maintain the highlights so that they don't blow out. By using the curves that we have here, we can get very specific on how different tones of the image are being affected. And of course you want to use it carefully because you can extremely mess up an image. Okay. Like I could bring this value up like this and now all of a sudden it's kind of funky, which you may think that's cool, but obviously, you know, the primary function of this is to actually retouch images in a certain way. Okay. The next tool that we have in this particular section is exposure and exposure again is a global uh, tool that affects everything equally. If I move the slider to the right, it just increases brightness, contrast, everything simultaneously. Okay. Offset controls how it's affecting the shadow area. Gamma correction affects how the pixels are being influenced by the exposure again across the board. If I choose say minus two under the preset, it globally shifts the exposure by minus two. So if you take a picture and say it's slightly underexposed, you could come up and choose plus one and it'll just increase the exposure, which there can be some extreme advantages to that. Say everything else is fine, the color, all of that is fine, the contrast even, but you just want to bump up the exposure. That's really where this tool comes into play. Okay. And again, you can go in and be specific with the eyedroppers and control just certain sections of it as well. Okay. So you can see where the offset is being affected. And what it's doing is it's preserving the pixels that I clicked on from the eyedroppers.